Good morning. Good morning. Welcome this morning to Tuesday morning, the uh, 17th of May, 2022, to Peace Through the Word, daily devotional ministry of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church, Benson, Arizona, in the United States of America. I'm Pastor Ron York of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church, and it's so good to be able to welcome you worldwide to this devotional ministry today. And uh, brothers and sisters, uh, it's a beautiful day again in Southern Arizona, trusting it's a beautiful day wherever you're chiming in from around the world. And today, uh, again, uh, we're going to be going through uh, St. Paul's letter to the Christian church at Ephesus and Ephesians. And today we're going to look at the subject of being blessed with the Spirit. What Spirit are we talking about? The Holy Spirit and being blessed with that. And too often, perhaps, maybe we don't give the Holy Spirit the attention that it that it uh, should have. And so this morning, uh, I pray that as we focus on the blessings that we receive from the Holy Spirit, that we will have a better appreciation for it. <laughs> ministers to our lives and gives us genuine, real peace right in the middle of some incredible challenges and chaos. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, uh, this morning, as we always do, we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, because that is the only real, true God. Amen. And I'm going to share with you this morning the uh, worship setting of responsive prayer one and pray that will bless you as well. So holy God, holy and most gracious Father, have mercy and hear us. And brothers and sisters, trusting in our Lord, in the teachings of our Lord and in his promises, we are bold to pray the prayer that he taught us, the Lord's Prayer. And so together we begin our time with, with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we want to profess the Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed, and so together we profess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, this morning I'm going to share with you St. Paul's letter to the Christian Church at Ephesus in Ephesians chapter 1 beginning in verse 13, going down to uh, uh, verse 23. And uh, so as we read this, um, focus on the blessings that are given to us by Jesus Christ through his Holy Spirit. It's no small thing. <laughs> And, and, you know, too often, you know, we, we, we blow through these things. And so, <laughs> you know, as a result, maybe we don't get the appreciation that Jesus wants us to have. So I pray that that will be a realization for us this morning. So beginning in verse 13 of this text, it says, In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. Now let me stop there for a minute. Notice the word sealed. The word sealed means you can't lose it. It doesn't seep out. It doesn't become depleted. You know, we, and, and the reason I say that is because we have 
Christian church denominations that teach that you've got to ask for a filling of the Holy Spirit. That's contrary to the word of God. Because it says right here, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. So why would you pray for a filling of the Holy Spirit if you've been sealed with it? The reason you would do that is you don't, you don't buy into this. You don't believe this. And they don't, which is tragic. And there are large Christian Reformed denominations, plural. It's tragic. Now, where do we get this promised Holy Spirit? You get it in your baptisms, even as a little baby. Word and sacrament ministry. Huge, huge. You see, that's the only way God deals with humanity. As I've said this so many times, but people don't get it. It's the only way God deals with humanity. He doesn't deal with you in any other way. And so if you're not making use of that word and sacrament ministry, not word or, because these large other denominations don't believe in the sacramental ministry either. So they're not you know, making regular use of word and sacrament. But that's the only way God deals with humanity. No other way. Okay? So you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it. Well, what's he talking about? That's the guarantee that you have salvation. Because you can only have salvation by trusting in Jesus Christ. And the only way you can trust in Jesus Christ, not by making a decision to accept him, invite him into a heart and life, pay, pray a pious prayer, walk down an aisle and confess him publicly like these people want to advocate. The only way you can get that and believe and trust in that is through this sealed Holy Spirit of which you get when you know nothing about it. <laughs> as a little bitty baby in your baptism. <laughs> you know, it's just like when you were born physically. You didn't do anything. You don't even remember it. So I always ask people, since you didn't do anything in your physical birth, you don't remember anything about it. You, you, made, you did nothing. You made no decisions, nothing at all. I ask them, well, then how do you know if you were physically born? If you didn't do anything, you don't remember anything, you didn't make you know, nothing, how do you even know that you're physically born? And they look at me confounded. <laughs> they go like, huh? <laughs> I go, well, <laughs> you're here. You're physically here, yet you didn't do anything. You didn't make any decision, you didn't do, you didn't do anything. You don't even remember it. Yet you're here. <laughs> Now, later on, as you went to school and you took science, and you, you know, you took biology and these things, and then you came to the knowledge of understanding and knowing what took place when you were physically born. And now you've got a real appreciation for what all went, ha what happened in your physical birth. Same thing happens with your spiritual birth. When you're baptized, baptized as a little baby, you don't know anything. You, <laughs> you didn't do anything. But now you're born spiritually. And so as you study the scriptures and as you see this being unfolded, now you've got an incredible appreciation for what Jesus has done for you by and through word and sacrament ministry. <laughs> it's the same stuff. It's amazing. So it's the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. And then St. Paul says, for this reason, because I've said these things to you from scripture, for this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. That's the Holy Spirit. Having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, 
that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. This is all the functions of the Holy Spirit because without the Holy Spirit, none of this is your capability. All right? Uh, so, and he goes, which has called you, uh, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his great might? So who's working? God's. You see, we, we do nothing. God does everything. Our faith in Jesus is a tremendous work. No question, word and sacrament ministry. But it's a work that we don't do. It's a work that God does. You see, if we have to do something, that's law. You know, make this decision, walk down this aisle, do this, do that, don't do that, but do this. <laughs> that's law. And the law never saves. It's only the gospel. The gospel is done. It's all done. There's nothing left to do. It's all done. Well, who did it? Jesus. So he does everything. I do nothing. So that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And then he put all things, not just some things, but all things under his feet. Under whose feet? Jesus Christ. Nobody else. Just Jesus. And not Jesus and, <laughs> and name your other personalities. No, just Jesus. He put all things under his feet and he gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. He fills. With what? The Holy Spirit. All right. So now let's see how our devotional wants to unpack this for us this morning and pray that will really bless us tremendously. So our reading begins with the final part of St. Paul's doxology, words of glory for the Holy Spirit. The Spirit's primary role is to enlighten the eyes of our hearts so we see God's grace and believe it, which means we trust in it. See, you can't believe, you can't trust in Jesus without the Holy Spirit. You can't bring yourself to faith. That's why we disagree vehemently with these Reformed denominations that say you've got to invite Jesus into your heart and life, make a decision for Christ. Because you can't do that. that the Bible says that's an impossibility for you to do. Yet it is so attractive to the human thinking that they disregard what scripture says and take this false teaching that these denominations are promoting. And it's not that we're trying to be spiteful or holier than thou. It's just we're audibilizing the facts of scripture. Because none of that teaching is supported in holy scripture from the first page of Genesis to the very last page of the book of the Revelation. It's not there. Totally false teaching. Totally. And yet it is so popular amongst evangelicals and so on. It's tragic. Okay? So even as Jesus was raised from the dead, so too the Holy Spirit raises our sin-dead souls and gives us eternal life. Romans chapter 8, I think it's in verse 7, says, you know, to the natural man, the things of God are hostile to him. So the natural person wants nothing to do with God, his word, his church, his ministries, or anything. And, and, and very vehemently resists it. You know, I can give you all the arguments to be a Christian. All the scriptural uh, notations, all the scriptural verses, everything. And plead with you <laughs> and do everything under the sun. And you'll go look at me and say, no. Why? It's because what is the Bible says? Jesus says, I draw all people unto me. So it is Jesus the one who has to draw you. Well, how does he do that? Does he come up and tap you on the shoulder? He draws you by his Holy Spirit. 
So when you feel that, you know, pull, don't resist. You see, you can't accept, which is totally, you know, contrary. Jesus never tells anybody to accept him, ever. He, he never even uses that word. The word is receive. Jesus accepts us. We don't accept him. Nonsense. But um, but that, that spirit draws you. And he says, I have to draw, draw people. I have to choose you. You don't choose me. He told that to the disciples. He said, you guys didn't choose me. I chose you. Same situation here. So he, he, he raises our sin-dead souls and he gives us eternal life. Simply stated, the Spirit creates the faith in Jesus through how? God's Word. How, does God, how is God's Word manifested? In the, pro, in the speaking, in the reading, and in the Word and Sacrament. It's word and sacrament ministry. Okay? So the Spirit is first given to us either when we hear God's powerful word or when we are baptized into the faith. Acts 2, verse 38. At that time, we are sealed, again, sealed as children of God. We are made uh, to be his treasured possession in your holy baptism. Moreover, the Spirit is the down payment for eternal life. Through the work of the Holy Spirit, we begin to see what eternal life in heaven will be like as we worship God, follow his commands, and love people. Well, where does all that happen? In the church. <laughs> That's why you need to be in church. Okay? So we praise God for his Spirit who empowers us to give the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, glory. Amen. We pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us your spirit so that we can be certain of your gift of eternal life. By your word and sacraments, please keep our faith strong. We ask it in Jesus' name. Thanks be to God, brothers and sisters, and I pray that will impeccably bless you, bless, <laughs> bless you tremendously. Amen. So we cry to you, O Lord, in the morning our prayers come before you. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and uphold us with a willing spirit. Our mouths are filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. Every day we will bless you and we will praise your name forever and ever. By awesome deeds you answer us with righteousness. O God of our salvation, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. He redeems our lives from the pit, and he crowns us with steadfast love and mercy. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Let our cries come to you. So let us pray. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept us this night from all harm and danger. And we pray that you would keep us this day also from sin and every evil, that all of our doings in life may please you. For into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls and all things. Let your holy angels be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, truly, let me thank you immensely for chiming in and joining us this morning for Peace Through the Word. I pray that it has blessed you and inspired you, encouraged you, and given you genuine, real peace this morning as you take a good, solid look at our Lord's Holy Spirit and how that blesses us tremendously. Pray you've had a, a wonderful appreciation of that, and that will transformationally affect your life by that same Holy Spirit. So brothers and sisters, it's a beautiful day today. I've got a pastor's meeting, about a three hour meeting here. That's why I'm coming to you early. I've got to get ready for that. So uh, I pray you will enjoy the blessings of our Lord in abundance today. And uh, so flaps have been retracted and I convey to each and every one of you.